Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to change the oil on this Jeep Cherokee KL here with the V6 3.2 Pentastar engine. If you're new here, welcome to the channel and don't forget to subscribe. So in order to get started, you wanna make sure that your vehicle is parked on a nice level surface. If you need to put it up on jack stands, you can. Be extra careful doing so. Me personally, I like to keep everything level. So what I often do is park halfway on a curb and I'll be on the curb as well as on the street and that also gives me some nice room to climb underneath and do everything I need to do. Now on this V6, your oil filter is actually gonna be underneath this little tab right here and it is on the top of the engine. If you don't have this cover, don't worry about it. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off just so you guys can see what's going on underneath. So as you can see, your oil filter is actually right here underneath this little housing here. This comes off and your oil filter is underneath. But first you're gonna wanna make sure you drain your oil so don't touch this just yet. Now for the oil, I always like to use a mobile one. That is pretty much what I put in my car and my wife's car's engine, 520, and that is what I stick with. For the filter, just make sure you get yourself a decent filter. Uh, for the most part of filters a filter, there are some really bad cheap filters out there. I am a really big fan of the Wix filters. If you don't like them, let me know in the comments down below what you think is a better filter and I'll check it out. Now, according to the book, this actually takes six quarts for an oil change. So this five quart bottle will not be enough, but I have a partial bottle from my last oil change I'm gonna be using. So under the Jeep, if you still have this skirt here, you'll see this cover right here. This cover is where the oil filter would be found. And it says right on it, except the 3.2, which is what we're working on here today. Now further back, you'll have another cover here. This one is where your oil drain plug should be. So you should just be able to turn that little lock and it'll pop down and you'll be able to access your drain plug. Now with that cover out of the way, you can easily access your drain plug right here. In my case, this is a 13 millimeter. I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen it up until it's about hand tight and make sure my drain pan's underneath it and then go ahead and dump all the oil out. Whew. So it's a good idea to run your vehicle for a little bit before you change your oil because it will get your oil nice and hot and you know that you're gonna get every drop out downside to that is the engine is nice and hot and obviously you can see where that could be a problem oh. yeah. mm. now on your plug you're gonna have this little gasket right here so while your oil is draining you want to make sure that you inspect this really good make sure that there's no rips or tears in it if you can think ahead of time and they have them in stock these are cheap just buy one and make sure you replace it when you pull your drain plug that you don't have to worry about any problems but in my case it looks good and my local place didn't have one in stock so i'm just going to go ahead and put this back on there and i guarantee that this will last a few more oil changes at least and now that it's pretty much all done draining i'm going to go ahead and reinstall my drain plug now I'm sure that there is a torque spec for the drain plug. I have no clue what it is right now off the top of my head, but you just wanna make sure that it's good and tight, but not over tight. I know that's, that's kind of a, a fine line between too tight and not tight enough, but just make sure it's good and snug, not tight enough that you think you're gonna strip it, but just make sure it's good and snug. And then don't forget to reinstall that little plastic cover. All right, so once again, I pulled the whole cover off so you guys can see this better. But this here is just the housing. This whole top piece comes off and it, it just unscrews. I do apologize for any noise in the background. The alarm is going off at the high school the next street over. And I don't know what it is. And a train is going by. So bear with me on audio. I'm doing my best. So right here is the housing for the oil filter. We're just gonna go ahead and remove this cap and the filter should be underneath it. Now I've had to replace this entire housing, so I'm not 100% sure if this is gonna be the same size across the board, but in my case, this is a 24 millimeter. Just wanna slowly unscrew that and hope we don't make too big of a mess. 
And there it is with the filter on the inside. Look how nasty that looks. Man. Once again, all this is extremely hot. Oh. Now, just a comparison, you can see that this filter is wore out. It's definitely a lower quality filter. Um, this one is the one that came with the kit from Amazon for my filter housing. So I knew this was gonna go bad rather quickly. Now this should just pop right off. You should just be able to grab it. And you wanna make sure that you dispose of that properly. Now while this is off, you wanna inspect this O-ring, get a really good look at it. They can swell, they can shrink. They can get wore out, they can get nicks in them. When you tighten it down, it might pinch it. You just want to make sure that you give this O-ring a really good look over to make sure that there's no damage and you're not going to have any leaks. Once again, if you're concerned about it, make sure you order one before. They're not that expensive. You're going to take our new oil filter and pop it right in place. There is a spring in there, so once it's bottomed all the way out, you can feel it that it's on there. And then we're going to go ahead and tighten this down. Now when tightening down this here, I'm sure there is a torque specification for it. The plastic housings tend to break. I don't know that this one has a torque spec because this one is from Amazon. So I'm just gonna make sure that it's snug enough that it's not gonna leak, but not so tight that it breaks the plastic. So make sure if you have a plastic housing, do not over tighten it. Maybe try to research and find out what the torque spec is. Just not over tightening it is the most important part. All right, so with our filter changed, we're going to go ahead and remove this cap right here. This is our engine oil fill cap, and as you can see, it says 5W20 on it, which is what we got. Now we can go ahead and put our funnel down and go ahead and fill this with about six quarts. I recommend putting five quarts in it first, then checking your dipstick, make sure that you're not over full, and then go ahead and top it off to the safe mark on the dipstick. So now I've got about five quarts in there and it's time to check it. So you always wanna make sure that you wipe your dipstick off, reinsert it, and then check it again. We're about right here which is just at the bottom of the safe mark. So I need to add about another quart. So once you've got your oil in there, it's good practice to go ahead and start the engine, let it run for a minute, shut it off, and then let it sit 10 to 15 minutes and recheck your oil level. Remember, it's always a lot easier to add oil than to take oil away. So make sure you check it periodically as you're adding. So I almost forgot to show you guys how to reset your oil life. If you have a keyed ignition, you're gonna go ahead and put your key in the run position without actually starting the vehicle. If you have a start stop button, what you're gonna do is you are gonna set it to the run position. And how to do that is it would be just like trying to start the car, only not putting your foot on the brake. I'm just gonna hit it once, put it right in that run position. You use your arrows to navigate to your vehicle info. And then what you can do is you can use your left and right arrows to find your oil life. And as it says right there, you can hold OK to reset. Boom, oil life reset, and you're good to go for another 100%. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. If you liked it and you found it helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. As always, don't forget to subscribe. You can check me out on Instagram at It's Project Venture, as well as the Tickety Talk at It's Project Venture. Thanks for watching.